Right, okay, I'm going to introduce you to James Elton. Um, James is an English designer and co-founder uh, of the creative agency, AKQA, is that correct? It's the correct way to say it. Uh, together with uh, three other co-founders, uh, he built the company into the UK's largest independent digital advertising agency. And as the agency grew, he assumed the role as executive creative director and finally chief creative officer, his current role. In the past years, uh, the company has flourished and received more than 100 industry awards between 2005 and 2010, including at least one Agency of the Year award every single year. Besides from the company's success, uh, Hilton has become an important name within his profession. In 2010, he was part of the creative magazine's list of, the list of the world's 50 most influential and inspiring creative personalities. And in 2011, he was named as UK's number one digital creative director. No. <laughs> try that out. <laughs> he, is, uh, he is also an executive member of the International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences, an intellectually diverse, invitation-only organisation. And this is, I've mentioned this to already, I'm a wee bit jealous about this, whose other members include the likes of David Bowie, one of my heroes, Francis Ford Coppola, Richard Branson, and of course, another one of my heroes, the Simpsons creator, uh, Matt Groening. I'm going to hand you over to James. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so I really like it uh, when people want to make life better for others. And they obviously want to have a lot of fun whilst they're doing it. I'm going to be 41 in literally a few days' time. And even to me, that sounds terribly, terribly old. Fortunately, I don't feel like a grown-up. Um, and I'm told this by my children, uh, Iman and Farah. They say that I'm the least grown-up of all the parents of all their friends. Um, and this is literally the highest accolade that one of your children can ever give you. So, at being 41, and after being around for that kind of length of time and surviving just, um, you think you'd learn a thing or two about life. You think you'd learn a thing or two about getting on. And I remember kind of sitting where you guys are, not actually where you guys are, because I've never been to university, but I remember being at school um, and having somebody talk to me about this sort of stuff. Um, so, nearing my twilight years, um, I thought I'd return the favour and kind of tell you guys the sort of stuff that I've learned. And you'll be pleased to know that as life goes on, you do get a gradual increase in your own life, in, uh, life intelligence, which is nice. Um, but it's often really, really difficult to pinpoint the exact things that you're learning, the exact lessons that you're being given at any particular point in time. You can feel that there's a, a general sense of learning, uh, but nothing really that you could write down and, and give as advice to anyone. But over the last kind of year or so, I don't know why, over the last year I've had a whole series of oh, moments as things start clicking into place. And so a lot of what I'm going to talk to you about today is that. I'm in advertising, I guess most of us actually are, in one way or another. And somebody tweeted the other day um, from TEDx uh, that they were really happy that I was here. And I'm very, very happy to be here as well. But they were happy to be here because there was an ad man coming to TEDx. Um, now, I'd like to say I've never been so insulted in all my life. <laughs> but that wouldn't be remotely true, because I've been insulted in many different ways. Um, but although I have been accused of, of working in advertising before, um, and advertising is often perceived as a slightly dirty word, I think it's entirely redeemable. I think we can liberate this word, advertising, and bring it better meaning, uh, a meaning that is far more about giving than it currently is about taking. And I think we can do this by adding another D. Clever, eh? That's it.
first bit more. Shit, 11 minutes. Um, oh, I promise I would swear as well. Right. So what's advertising? Advertising is about contribution. It's the idea that instead of adding more cluster and more sensory pollution to the world, companies can market themselves through creating indispensable services, products and experiences that bring people delight and actually make life easier. Wouldn't that be nice? But first of all, um, <laughs> in my head just then I was going, but first I'm going to take a selfie, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but first, um, do you know what the word agency means? Now I come from agency land, and, and I know some people in agency land, and I've asked them what the word agency means, and they didn't know either, and I just found this out the other day. Does anyone know what the word agency means? What does somebody say? Agency over something you have control that ownership over. Sort of. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Um, I, so if you want to understand someone, you have to love them. Even a little bit, you just have to love them. You have to, whatever, you have to love something about them, or you have to love their interest, or their problem, or their dilemma, their vision, whatever. You have to love something of them. And the more you love of them, the more you understand them. And the more you understand somebody, the more you have agency with them. So to have agency is to understand something. So I have agency with you. Possibly. I don't know. Going out on a limb. It's surprising how few agencies remember that. Now, I believe that the dynamics that exist between you and I, between you and your friends, between a brand and an agency, between a brand and a customer, I believe those dynamics are all exactly the same. But they don't seem to be a lot of the time. We are all brands, every single one of us. We all know, or we should, that we are judged through our behaviours and our actions. Not our colours or our clothes or anything like that. These are kind of veneer. They're part of a brand, but not really the soul of the brand. They're an aesthetic. The James brand, presented here in front of you, uh, despite what I might say it is, is whatever you think it is, I think. Exotic genius, you think, flat, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Similarly, the mobile brand in your pocket is whatever you think it is, despite whatever the manufacturer of that says it is. It is how it works. If it works well, good brand. If it works badly, poor brand. Now, this may be a good or bad thing, depending on whether or not your views align. How authentic something is, is the linchpin of feeling any kind of love whatsoever. Because after all the veneers have been stripped away, how authentic is what they is what they're, is, I've got all this, how authentic they are and what they say means everything. Authenticity is the most sought after characteristic in the world, simply because you can't manufacture it. It already exists in every single person. It's just that you have to find it. But the problem is, as soon as we move away from being individuals to being a brand, the first thing to suffer is often authenticity. Why? What changes? Well, call me an old softy, but I think it's love. The love goes out of stuff. Think back to an exceptional experience you've ever had with a brand, whether that's online or offline, where the service has been impeccable and where you came away smiling or at least with a, a sense of satisfaction. Can you picture such a, an instance in your mind? Now, I believe that that happened because those that you were dealing with, the interface, human or otherwise, truly believed in what they were doing. They put their heart and soul into it, and they loved it. And that came across to you as authenticity. 
And for authenticity to appear genuine, it has to be genuine. It's like a, a smile or a handshake. We've all been given a smile by someone that we know is fake. Or we've all been given the zombie handshake, where you know that, or they're looking somewhere else while they're, I hate that. That does my head in when people do that. But the most forward thinking and innovative brands on the planet, they understand this inherently. And many others think that they understand it. And they think they understand it by because these words crop up again and again in their brand manuals. One day you'll have the joy of looking through a brand manual. And hopefully you'll remember these words. Because therein lies the problem. Authentic isn't a tone of voice. Love is not a metric. It's not a tick box. They are instead the intangible products of businesses born of passion, driven by people who want to solve problems for their customers and reduce friction and remove clutter. Of course, the trick is to make sure that this passion is not turned into a process. Passion, love, is emotional. Business processes are by definition rational. Emotional, rational. Finding the common ground between these two opposites is an ongoing challenge and so requires ongoing effort. Ongoing effort is usually the part where most people go, oh, ongoing effort, that sounds difficult. <laughs> but as far as I can see, there's no permanent way to address this balance. It's something that you have to tweak forever and ever and ever within ourselves and within our business. People love a process because it's a rule, it's something to follow. And it brings with it an enormous sense of responsibility and an enormous sense of safety. But people also love passion because they love it when something goes right. They love it when something of worth is created. And they want to capture the circumstances surrounding that creation, bottle it up and give it out to everyone else to make sure that it happens again. But of course, you know where I'm going with this. As soon as we do that, we create monsters. Our best intentions to create one-size-fits-all rules just simply don't work. So how do we find and nurture within businesses, within products, within ourselves, this authentic self? How do we ensure that we're adding and not just simply creating ads? What we do at AKQA is very, very simple. In fact, most businesses are really, really simple. Life, actually, bizarrely enough, is actually really, really simple. It's just that there are an awful lot of us out there who like to make things more complicated than they need to be. And I'm sure you know a few of them. Now, in the time that I've been around, I've observed a whole bunch of different behaviours in my time on this planet. And I've taken note of all of them. And the ones that I've seen repeated to my own definition of success, I've kind of noted and kept down. Not so much rules, more loosely held bits of paper with scribbles on them, but I call them gists. And there are eight of them at the moment. Might be more, might be less, depending on how well this talk goes. Um, and I certainly don't think they're the ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything. Uh, anyone who knows where their towel is already knows that that's 42. But they are a way to make life better, simpler, easier, more enjoyable. And they're the attitudes that I've seen proliferate throughout companies and individuals. They're nothing new, but what is. But they're more reminders than they are revelations. Hurting or healing is number one. Is what you're doing hurting or healing? Are you adding or are you taking away? Your company or yourself? There's two types of people in this world. Well, three types of people. first type is the person who divides the people into two types of people. The second type of person <laughs> are the energy givers. And the third type of people are the energy takers. Now, we all know who the energy takers are. They're the people that sap us of fun. As my daughter calls them, fun sponges. <laughs> You don't want to be around a fun sponge. You want to be around a fun 
obviously it's fun. Right <laughs> back, it's a fun sprinkler. <laughs> that doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Number two, never stop trying to be attractive. You can sum this up um, as in new customers only. Are you already irritated by that phrase, new customers only? When you see a brilliant deal that for a brand that you're already engaged with, and they say you can have it all for free, oh, new customers only. That's not very attractive. You would, if you, again, if we think of the dynamics being the same as they are in normal life, uh, you've been with your partner for years, and you're going out tonight, and you're dressed to the nines because you're going out with somebody else tonight, and they look at you going, what the fuck? And it's like, we went out last night, and you went out in a pair of ripped jeans. What's the deal? New customers only. <laughs> You're not going to get away with it, are you? Give more, expect less. <laughs> My notes have just crashed, that's good. <laughs> Giving is about being helpful. Be helpful. And then be even more helpful. Be remarkably helpful. Because it's amazing how many people out there aren't. Bear with me. Call her. So I'm just uh, looking at Instagram. <laughs> if you give more, people will respect you for that. But don't expect stuff back. As Mum always said, just because you give somebody a gift, don't expect one back. You because it's the right thing to do. Got it now. I don't think you're good at this. Don't compare yourself to others. <clears throat> Despite what fat opera singers say, comparison is the root to misery. As soon as you start comparing yourself to somebody else, you're spending less time about you. Be the best you that you can be. Of course, notice what other people do and learn from their success and failures. But don't try to emulate them, because that's not authentic. That's them, not you. And the more time you're concerned with others, the less time you're going to be concerned finding your own authentic voice. Again, throughout all this, I'm talking about business and products, but Weirdly, it's also talking about who you are as well, because you will become your businesses, you will become your products. So it's important that these thoughts infuse everything. Because if you can find your own authentic voice, if you haven't spent your life comparing, then you'll only ever end up being you, which is the best thing that you can possibly be, because nobody can ever tell you that you got you wrong. Everyone wishes that they had 2020 foresight. Everyone's got 2020 hindsight. Everyone knows the hindsight kid, you know, who comes in after the event and says, well, we should have done this. It's like, brilliant, thanks, hindsight kid. <laughs> you need 2020 foresight. That doesn't exist, but it does. Voices in your head. Everyone's got them. This is they tell you really, really inconvenient things that are going to be difficult to do, or they're going to upset somebody, or they might put you in a bad light. But trust me, the thing that they tell you, as long as it's not kill, 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 <laughs> the thing that they tell you is truth. If your loved ones aren't happy, it's your problem. You'll always find a perfectly reasonable argument as to why somebody's unhappiness is not your fault, is not your problem, is not your fault. It literally just comes down to how much you care. We have a duty of care to our customers, to our clients, to our partners, to our families. And this can be very inconvenient, this duty of care. But never wait for somebody else to come along and fix the problem, because invariably they probably won't. It goes back to one of the first ones. Be helpful. Because even if you can't fix it, at least you earn their respect. No good plan survives contact with the enemy, so a famous general once said. And the idea around this is don't allow your previous decisions to become dogma. 
Don't allow something that you decided a year ago, now that the environment has completely changed, the situation has completely changed, don't stick to your guns. Plan to pivot. Plan to change all the time. When something happens and you have to change, that's fine. Learn what you can. Move on. Make the decision and move on. My grandfather introduced me to the idea of the shit sandwich. And we've all eaten one every now and then. And the idea is you don't nibble them. Just close your eyes and chomp down. <laughs> Learn what you can and move on. Never repeat the same mistake. You'll never be a loser. Losers are our shampoo, they just rinse and repeat the same mistakes over and over again. This is the hardest one of all, dignity and honour. To conduct your life with dignity and honour will oftentimes leave you standing alone. Only in the short term though. But it's the only way to live your life if you want to contribute positively, if you want to add. It's about treating people with kindness, even though you're going to need to make decisions that people might not take kindly. It's about delivering upon agreements that you might not wish to. It's about dealing with negativity and drama with complete neutrality. You don't want the drama in your life. Fun sponges will create drama. Don't feed them. As a wise man once, called, once, once told me, the smallest birds flap the most. Don't give them any time. None of this is rocket science. It's just hard. It's really hard to live your life like this. Because so many are doing it the other way. So many are doing it the easy way. It's really inconvenient to just say you're authentic rather than being authentic. It takes time and effort to create experiences that delight people. It takes concerted amount of resources and responsibility of yourselves to make sure that you're adding to people's lives. But it's the only way forward. Because nobody talks about an amazing thing that they saw or did because it, it was an immense effort of doing somebody's job. It's always a labour of love. Nobody ever saw anything that was amazing because it was about the pursuit of material gain. Because all of these things come from love. How much you love doing something is everything. If you do not love what you are doing, stop. Go and do something else that you do love. Don't waste your life doing a job. Now, just before I go, I said that I didn't have the meaning of life, basically, because I've never been that confident, ever. Um, but I was told one once, and I think it sums up everything perfectly. Um, so I was, I was late for a meeting in London, and I was running down the street, or running, walking fast. <laughs> <laughs> you don't run when you dress like this. <laughs> and, um, and there was this Buddhist monk in the street, and uh, he wanted to give me a leaflet. And, and so I kind of like, because I didn't have time, I kind of like gave him a fake smile and mumbled something about being late. And he smiled back at me. Not fake. And he said very quietly and very quickly, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. Smart man. So I sincerely hope you enjoy the rest of your day. <coughs>